Today we're going to demonstrate the measurement of the pitch diameter of an API pin connection. The most critical part of any setup is to start off with a proper gauge setup sheet which comes from our TDWIN taper software shown here on the uh, display table. And starting off with the first column it tells us our MRP is a MRP 2001 which consists of a lower arm and a shoe an upper arm and a shoe and the main body with the rails set up for seven and five eighths and smaller and then over in the rod setting standard it shows us the proper A dimension and B dimension set up for the gauge. This is very critical that we have this so that we can document the serial numbers of our standards and our gauges to show traceability of our calibration. Now that we've reviewed our setup sheet, we're going to set up the gauge to measure a five and a half inch LTC pin. First I'm going to take the lower arm. This is being held by the MRP gauge setting stand that lets both of your hands be free while you're doing the adjustment. The gauge has a ball detent spring plunger in the block that allows us to set the standard down. We're going to use what we call this the B standard. It's the short one of the two. And we bring it down, and I like to put my thumb right over the top of the shoe, rotate the shoe side to side to get it running parallel with the wear pad and the back of the shoe. Tighten the two knobs. Tighten them tight. I know you're going to want to use pliers. And then when I slide it out, it comes out. Set it down. I'm going to grab my upper arm. My upper arm already has the indicator mounted into it. I drop it in, take the same setting standard, the same B, and set it down. The tendency is going to want to pinch using the upper arm, but that could apply a bending moment to that stem. So I always like pushing down on the shoe and then locking my knobs. I rotate my shoe, my standard side to side to make sure it's parallel with the wear pad. Continue to tighten. So now I have set both gauges out to the pitch diameter plane. Now the next thing I have to do is set the diameter. I have the Jim Douglas prefers to have the rails on the top block sticking out maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That way I have full view of the indicator when I'm measuring the connection. So then I bring the gauge up and then I preload it about a hundred thousandths. Then I will lock my knobs. And next I'm going to take it off the stand. Now I take the MRP 2001 off the stand so that I can make sure that all eight of the locking knobs on the blocks are tight because that keeps the blocks from moving. Then I take the A part of the standard and I set it in between the upper shoe and the lower shoe and I sweep side to side and in and out until the dial reads zero. Then I lock my bezel and anytime you lock a bezel, I don't care if it's an MRP or a bore gauge, you always want to come back in and double check your zero because that's exactly what you're going to do when you're out on the line and periodically every tenth joint or so you'll want to double check your zero setting to uh, verify that your gauge is still set properly. Now next we'll go over to the connection itself. Okay, now that we've set our MRP 2001 for this five and a half inch LTC pin, we'll go in and I like to kind of hold the instrument where I can bring the wear pads up against the face of the connection. I have my lower left hand directly above the shoe and I just sweep until I get my highest reading and then I'm going to turn the gauge 90 degrees and look for the highest reading on that side. At the 90 degree position we're looking for a difference between the first reading that we took at 12 o'clock and this reading at 3 o'clock and if the value is 
different by more than a thousandth, then I will search left and right and come back around until I find the highest and the lowest reading. Because one is going to be the ovality, how much did the indicator change between the two readings, and then the average of the two will be tell us what size the pitch diameter is if the part was round. Always document your readings after every connection measurement.